One group of animals most people have a problem with are the spiders. Just like butterflies, they're arthropods. True, there are some differences. But what is it about spiders that gives us the heebie-jeebies? Since most of them are harmless. Is it the eight little eyes and hairy bodies? Or the fast and unpredictable movements? Is it some bad experience growing up? Or an encounter with a cobweb? Oh, bloody hell! I hate spiderwebs! Could it be all the fictitious stories and urban legends, like the one about everyone eating five spiders a year in their sleep? A bunch of hooey. Mm. Then again, it might be all those bad, big-budget movies that instill fear and loathing. Or is it something more innate that makes our skin crawl and cause nightmares? Whatever the reasons, a lot of people have strong opinions. Spiders? I hate those mother Spiders? They scare the shit out of me. I hate those spiders, man. I don't really like spiders. Spiders don't bother me very much. I think spiders are awesome. Taking a closer look at spiders just might change your impression of these common and important animals. First of all, they differ from the insects in many ways. They don't have antennae nor wings. They have two body parts and eight legs, but also two leg-like appendages called palps located near the mouth. Spiders usually have eight eyes and chelicera, structures that house the fangs. Almost all spiders make silk, which is very useful stuff for moving around and not falling a thousand stories out of a tree. Many species use it to catch food and store it, or wrapping up presents. It certainly can give the advantage when trying to dominate a prey many times its size. Others use silk to haul the kids around, or to protect them as they grow up. Some species travel long distances by ballooning. They just roll out a length of silk, hang on tight, and let the wind pick it up, and off you go. Ballooning. Great way to travel, but you may end up in Libya instead of France. Spiders have seven types of silk glands in all, but not a single species has all the types. Silk is very amazing stuff. It's stronger than steel for its size, but it can stretch twice its length before breaking, and it's coated with antibiotics to prevent decay. Recycling is easy. Chew it up, and your body does the rest. Spiders make all kinds of webs to catch all kinds of small prey items. Silk is applied by the spinnerets that are on the abdomen. The number, shape, and placement of them is important for identification. Spiders also have some cool adaptations, like specialized hairs on their legs for detecting vibrations and air movements. Male spiders have palpal organs on the tips of the palps, those appendages by the mouth. To mate, sperm is placed on a silk thread or on a special web. Shortly thereafter, the palpal organs suck it up. Now he's packing a pair of sex pistols, so to speak. With all these males walking around with loaded pistols, you might think there'd be a lot of trouble in town. Many male spiders do fight over the females, but the palpal organs are strictly for sex. They are used when the male inserts them into the female opening, which is found on the underside of her abdomen. That sounds easy, but since spiders generally live as solo predators, this idea of getting together is a little sketchy. In fact, they often try and eat each other, none too romantic. So, many have evolved mating dances and procedures like silk handcuffs and gifts of food to reduce any fatal mistakes. However, sometimes she gets a little romance and gets dinner. 
Spider eggs vary in number and size, depending on the species. The eggs are protected by mommy and are often carried around with her. Spiderlings hatch out and, depending on the species, are on their own or get some more parental care. Spiders molt in order to grow, and the number of molts varies with the species and the size of the animal. Families of spiders are told apart by their tarsi, number and organization of the eyes, type of silk glands, type of webs, spines, and fangs. Many are difficult to ID, but some are pretty easy, like the tarantulas. Due to their great size, tarantulas are some of the most well-known spiders in the world. They are kept as pets and used in research. And recently, German scientists discovered that this zebra tarantula has unique silk glands on its feet that secrete a particularly sticky silk that allows them to walk on slick and vertical surfaces. Wunderbar! Many of them live in burrows, while others are arboreal. Tarantulas are nocturnal hunters that feed mostly on other arthropods. But some of the larger species, with leg spans of eight inches or more, can eat frogs, lizards, and baby birds. Tarantulas belong to a more primitive line of spiders, whose fangs move up and down. They are distinguished from other hairy spiders from having only two claws, on the tarsi, small equally sized eyes grouped together, and two pairs of large spinnerets. Tarantulas in the tropics have a long lifespan. In some cases, females can live over 10 years. There is way too much folklore about these spiders. For example, they can't jump huge distances to attack unsuspecting people. In Costa Rica, they are often called mata caballo, or horse killer, coming from the old belief that tarantulas transmitted hoof and mouth disease which is actually caused by a bacillus, although they can flick body hairs that hurt if they land in one's eyes. They can't be thrown very far at all. But if you'd like a little tarantula hors d'oeuvre, be sure to remove the hairs, like this Quatamundi is doing with a little roll-your-own action. Sure, they can bite if pressured and cornered, but wouldn't you bite too? Purse web spiders build a web that covers the ground or tree trunk, and then they wait beneath the web until a hapless insect walks across it. Suddenly, fangs thrust up through the silk and its toast. Like the tarantulas, they have fangs that move up and down. Purse web spiders have a pit in the middle of their body, and the eyes are small. Two-tailed spiders are tropical spiders that can be found on tree trunks on the edge of forests. They get their name from two very long spinnerets that are often held vertically when running off. They hug the trunk and are well camouflaged. The long-legged spiders look like daddy longlegs or harvestmen. You almost always see cellar spiders hanging upside down. These spiders build aerial sheet webs that look as if the owner wanted to invest as little as possible. They wrap their prey in silk before dispatching them with a bite. Recent studies have shown that in one species, the more the male squeezes the female while having sex, the more offspring he will sire. To prevent any damaging squeezes, the female squeaks to let him know. Spitting spiders don't build a web to catch their prey, but rather are wandering hunters that upon finding a nice meal, spit out two streams of gummy, super glue-like stuff that glues the poor Vic to the ground. This big hump of the spider are where the glue glands are. The famous black widow belongs to this family, but it doesn't occur in Costa Rica. In fact, there are no spiders of too great concern in the country. Comb-footed spider's venom is only a problem if you're an insect half an inch long. When confronted with a human, they are total cowards. 
comb-footed spiders build scaffold webs, that is, cobwebs, and they hang upside down in them. These spiders have globular abdomens and a special comb on their hind leg that helps spread out the silk. Sheet web spiders have a more elongated body than the comb-footed spiders. They are common small spiders that make flat or bowl-shaped webs that usually have an irregular mesh around the sheet-like part. They often have pretty designs on their bodies. Wolf spiders are active daytime hunters found mostly on the ground, but this species has the walk on the water trick down quite well. Wolf spiders have four small eyes in the first row, two large ones in the second, and two small ones in the third row. The real walk on water dudes are the fishing spiders that can even dive underwater to catch aquatic insects and even fishies. They look similar to wolf spiders, but they only have two rows of eyes with the first row curved slightly downward. Funnel web spiders build distinctive webs that end in a tube. Unlike most spiders, they sit upright on the web and wait until a prey comes near. They have long legs, which help when retreating into the tube. This species, Tangella radiata, is commonly seen on road banks and in abandoned buildings. Lynx spiders are the cats of the spiders. They run, jump, and pounce on their prey. They have a characteristic oval eye pattern with eight eyes. No webs are made by these hyperactive spiders. Wandering spiders are common in Costa Rica and are hunters that don't make webs either. They are more aggressive than most spiders, and if you want to have a phobia freakout, do it with one of this family, since some species have very strong venom. They carry their eggs attached to the spinnerets. Some are very large spiders and can be told apart from others, like wolf spiders, by the eye configuration. Crab spiders are cool little guys that are usually found hiding in flowers that they mimic. They are sit and wait predators with enlarged front legs that help in subduing their vix. Like crabs, they walk sideways and backwards. Did you ever hear about the spider that ate Moscow? Almost everybody in Costa Rica lives with giant crab spiders. And if you have your doubts, just look behind anything on the wall. They too have a unique arrangement of the eyes. These wafer-thin spiders move quickly and sideways to catch insects at night and then spend the day behind your latest Picasso. Jumping spiders are another webless family of on-the-go hunters. They have binocular vision which enables long leaps to avoid capture by predators and to capture food themselves. With this very erratic movement, they get close to its prey and then jump but not before attaching a drag line of silk so it can free fall to safety with dinner. Some in the family are excellent mimics of ants, which are a good model to mimic since they bite and sting. Sure looks like an ant. Long-jawed spiders have great stick-like camouflage, and notably very long chelicera, especially in the males. Many of these species have adapted a way to avoid death at mating. The male approaches the female and with some quick footwork, locks his jaws under hers, with the help of a special little spur on his jaw. The palpal organs then go into action, and this sexual handcuff adaptation has led to some really large chelicera. Net-throwing spiders 
Don't use static nets, but rather generate one for the night's ambush. They are sometimes called stick spiders. They can emit a false moth pheromone to lure the prey into its net. After dinner, the net is eaten. Maybe it's like a brandy after a good meal. Net throwing spiders are one of the many families that produce a special type of silk called cribulate silk that comes from one of those seven kinds of glands. It can be seen just above the normal spinnerets on the tip of the abdomen. The spider that everyone sees on a trip to the country is an orb weaver. One reason you can't miss them is that their circular webs are large and often cross the trails. One of which, the spiny-bellied spiders, have these spiny projections on its body. These spiders are forest species whose webs are made between two trees that can be spaced as far apart as two yards. The silver orb weavers make a thick zigzag of silk in their webs. One theory is that this alerts any fast flying birds to the web's presence, thus avoiding any nasty collisions. Another idea is that by changing the size of this special zigzag, the spider can vary the number of prey captured. A hungry spider makes one that isn't very visible. Common orb weavers are widespread. This species here makes its web at night, catches what it can, and then dismantles the web before daybreak, thus avoiding predation by birds, many of which love to eat spiders. The queen of Costa Rican spiders is the golden orb weaver. She's beautiful and powerful, and her webs make the tropical forest that much more fun to walk through. Her king is the little dude off to the side, a complete wimp. This very successful and widely distributed species makes a huge orb web, more than a yard wide, whose shiny gold strands give it its name. Golden orbs watch their web 24-7 and catch a variety of prey. Like many spiders, it bites its victim and injects digestive juices into it. Afterwards, it's wrapped up for later consumption and placed in the hub of the web. Prey that taste nasty, bite or sting or spit, are just cut out of the web. Other species take advantage of the whole operation, such as certain comb-footed spiders that hang out in the web. They get to the prey before she does and suck out those nicely wrapped up process victims dangling in the web. These lowlifes are called kleptoparasites. Orb weaver males are a fraction of the size of the female, and she can be a big badass bitch, so that he often mates while she is preoccupied feeding. This may be a strategy on his part, that is, not to turn himself into dinner while he's trying to accomplish his courtly duty. Spiders are part of culture all around the world. In Costa Rica, some folk leave spider webs in their homes so as to help the souls of the deceased climb to the heavens. Back on Earth, spiders are important predators in the home and garden. And spiders have even helped in the war against drugs. Over 50 years ago, experiments showed the effects on web design after spiders were fed different drugs. Whoa, no more coffee. However, Research on the effects of alcohol have not validated the prediction. Research in spider biology has given us many insights into animal behavior and evolution. Spiders are extremely important predators in most ecosystems in the world. And of course, they have the right to exist just like any other species.